Would you like to manage authorization of your APIs and applications on the cloud so other entities like third-party applications can use them? Have you thought about using an authorization standard that uses an access token? Let me show you how an access token works. Think about your car keys. Your car usually has a regular key and a valet key. The valet key has no access to the glove box, trunk, motor, or gas tank. This key is mainly used to park your car while you visit restaurants, stores, and other businesses that offer a valet parking service. OAuth 2.0 is an open standard framework that can securely issue and validate tokens for services on the internet. OAuth essentially allows access tokens to be issued to third-party clients by an authorization server with the approval of the user. The third party then uses the access token to access the protected resources hosted by the resource server. The access tokens will have some limitations, like the valet key. So, who are the participants or roles involved in this standard? The resource owner or user who owns the data. The client application is who wants to access or manipulate the user's data. For example, a web or mobile app. The authorization server issues access tokens to the client app, which are used to request access to the user's data. Google, Facebook, and LinkedIn are some common examples. The resource server retrieves the user's data if the owner authorizes it. Examples include Dropbox, Google Drive, or any social network resource. In many scenarios, the authorization server and the resource server are part of the same trust domain. All of these participants interact through flows, like the two- or three-legged flows. The three-legged flow typically involves three legs or parties. The user, or resource owner, the client, or third-party application, and the authorization server. On the other hand, the two-legged flow describes a typical client-server scenario, without any user involvement. An example is a local Facebook mobile application accessing your Facebook account. Let's review a scenario where all these participants are involved. Here, a user wants to book a flight from the airline website or client application. He's able to complete the reservation without manually creating a user account within the airline system because he uses a trusted authorization server, such as Facebook or Twitter, to log in. He gives his consent to use data from his social account through OAuth. When the user tries to pay for his tickets using net banking, he's prompted to log into his bank account, which then authorizes the payment. Just like this scenario, there are many others where mobile applications and cloud services are using OAuth for authorization without the need to manually create an account for the third-party app. Let's take a look at what happens when the user gives his consent to the airline application through Facebook. First, the user is being redirected to the Facebook OAuth consent form. The URL shows request elements like app ID, client ID, response type, and scope, among others. In this case, the response type indicates that it expects a token from the authorization server. The authorization scope determines the resources to access from the user's Facebook account, like email and user birthday. After the user gives consent to access his resources, the airline application receives an access token, which is used to access the resources on behalf of the user. An access token represents an authorization that a client application may have to do something on behalf of the resource owner or user. It can only be used by a specific client application, and it has a timeout. There are other types of tokens in OAuth. For example, refresh tokens, which allow clients to obtain a fresh access token without re-obtaining authorization from the resource owner. It's a long-lived token, and it's useful when the client application wants to keep an authorization for a very long time, like days or even months. Some authorization servers support the refresh token revocation prior to its timeout. For example, when the user removes the previously granted airline application from his Facebook app settings. Besides the previous tokens, the authorization code works almost like a token, but it doesn't carry out any authorization information or scopes in it. It's used in a very specific situation. We'll talk more about this in a future video. Every token has specific authorization scopes and durations of access, granted by the resource owner and enforced by the resource server and the authorization server. The scope is a parameter, which is included when a client app makes a request to the authorization or token endpoints. OAuth scopes provide a way to limit the amount of access that's granted to an access token. For example, an access token issued to a social network application might include post to my wall, send notification, or read my age. 
The client application can trigger processes or access users' data through these tokens. An access token proves that the user has given consent to access specific information or resources. OAuth defines a number of grant types or ways for a client application to acquire an access token. They include authorization code, implicit, resource owner password credentials, and client credentials. Each grant type is used in a specific scenario. To learn more about OAuth grants, when to use them, and how they work, check out other videos in this series. Thank you for watching.